What is up guys, my name is Meeps and welcome back for yet another League of Legends video. So today we are playing none other than Graves Jungle. Uh, this guy is one of my all time favorite junglers, most because he feels a little bit like playing an ADC, but as a jungler, but a bit more tanky, he's healthy, he's fast, fast clear, and he's just really freaking fun. Um, so that's what we're playing today. By the way, just for those of you who are new to these kind of guides, this guide specifically will only focus on the mechanical aspect of playing Graves. So this, or not the mechanical, the macro aspect. Wow, I really failed that. The macro aspect of playing Graves, meaning the decision making, the uh, play style, how to play it early, mid and late game, etc. And all this stuff. This is all this video will focus on. If you need to learn the mechanical side of playing Graves, then you need to go to the link in the description. Uh, there's a link to my other Graves video, which does the opposite thing. It only focuses on the mechanics, the abilities, and it, like the combos and all this stuff. So basically everything you need mechanically to play this champion. In this video, I will not be going into detail with any of this. I should have taken my E, by the way. God dang it. Oh, well, we'll start in Q. Um, but it will only focus on, uh, or that video will only focus on the me mechanics. So that is kind of it for the intro. And I, but just one thing I would really recommend you guys to, if you have not watched that video, either go watch it before this one or watch it afterwards. Uh, it's best to see it before because throughout this macro guide, I will not explain any of the, uh, mechanics on the champion and therefore you will probably get a bit more out of this one if you've seen the uh, mechanical aspect of playing graves prior to this one anyway all that aside let's kind of just get into this one just a slight side note if you are new in here uh then make sure to subscribe down below join in on our awesome community it's been amazing to see the amino support we've gotten over the last uh couple of weeks i really appreciate it thank you guys so much for all the support and uh yeah if you enjoy this video smash that like button and if you want to see me live go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live i stream in there every single friday all right so let's start talking about how to play this guy in the early game so as a jungler on graves um what you kind of oh we can probably go help here we'll go real quick If this is warded. Yep. Thought so. We'll remove it. There we go. All right. Uh, as a jungler on Graves, you have a couple of options. Personally, I really like to gank early on Graves. And the reason for this is that Graves is overall just an amazing uh, early er, early champion for ganking. Like, he's really freaking good at early game. He's also scaling really well into mid and late game. So, just yeah, this guy's really, really freaking fun to play overall. But he has a really strong level 3 gank. And this is something that I really like to play around. Well, we are probably going to back out from this one. We'll just take the Q damage on him and we'll back out. Let's take our Raptors. Right here, I think we'll go Raptors. Then we'll take Scuttle bot side. I think we'll be able to do so before him. So let's get this. But Graves just has an overall really nice feel to him all the way through. He doesn't really have a really, really weak phase where he just overall sucks. He's just pretty good, like, all around. He's a really good overall champ. You can play him both in a Bruiser style and in an Assassin style, depending on which items you build. Uh, both things are very viable. Uh, but personally, I like going kind of more the Bruiser way. I feel like it's a lot more consistent, if you could say that. Um, and that's something that I personally prioritize. So... But yeah, for the early game, the reason why we started blue uh, and what I did, which I honestly recommend people at lower elo to do, is go to the opposite, uh, to your opposite buff, the buff you're not starting at. Uh, they're going to see me, aren't they? They already know, but I'm going to go for this. We should be able to get it. We'll put this in front of him. We're not going to be able to finish off a gank there, but... They are going to be using their CD. Sadly, I don't have my scan now, so I won't be able to remove this vision right now. But we can go back up. We can take the blue scan and we can go back. But seeing as I don't know exactly where Shivana is. 
All right, she's right, right there. She is only level three at this point. All right, we will finish this one off. We'll look for another gank. But personally, I really like going up to my own, uh, to my other buff, ward it up, and then back out, uh, swap my ward into the Oracle lens, and then go for the, the, the buff that I'm going to start at. The reason for this is that then I don't have to rely on my top laner to actually put down vision, which there's a lot of, especially top laners at lower elo that does not want to do for you or doesn't kind of protect it. So this is a way for you to just overall uh, be a bit more safe, or at least you will know if they steal your red, you can just go to theirs. So that's why we ran up here at the beginning. We took the, took it or put down a ward, backed out, went back down to our blue, killed blue with our bot lane. And then I took the, the Grump and then we moved red buff. Then we were level three. And from level three, we had a couple of different options. We could one, we could gank top, we could gank bot, or we could gank top, we could gank mid. We could go for, uh, ooh, let's get this gank. We could go for a counter jungle or we could take a scuttle. So that's kind of the options that we had. Should be some pretty good damage on this guy. He did just get level 6, but this should be a 100% free kill. Without that, we're going to give it to uh, Aatrox to make sure that he wins his lane. Um, but that's the, the different options you have as you uh, as you, you start or as you get level 3. So when you go blue, Grom, red, then you can go top gank, you can gank mid, you can go for a counter jungle, you can take Scuttle, or you can go clear more of your own jungle. Generally speaking, I would recommend people to not go for full clear. It's generally like you've got to think of the fact that Grace is a good, like really good at ganking overall. And your finest job, in my opinion, as a jungler is not necessarily to get kills, but it is to apply pressure to other lanes and setting them up for success. And so the way to do so is to go for ganks. And even if you don't manage to get the kill, you apply presence by you being there. And you also uh, maybe get some of their summoners or abilities, or at least make them more scared to go forward because the enemy knows that you, you're nearby. So that's our finest job as a jungler. It's apply presence and to be on objective. Um, and one thing I, I need to be a bit more aware of in this game is we're playing against a Shivana, and Shivana really likes to go for Drakes. So this means that we are going to have to be more or less on point with uh, Drakes right away. Alright, so we're going to go for another top gank because I can see this guy is just pushing forward. Also, there. Let's see, their blue is coming back up. And I should be able to just go here. Right there, we should be able to get him. I'm right behind you, dude. Put this in front of him. And we should be able to get this guy another kill. There we go. So, two kills so far. This Aatrox, not only... Like, we could take the kill for ourselves. And maybe it'll make some of our other, our other ganks a bit easier. But the fact that we're giving uh, this guy the kills is... In turn, especially the lower elo is really good. Because it's going to... It's basically gonna make your team kind of respect you. And this guy is like now Aatrox is very comfortable. It's gonna be a lot harder for him to screw it up. And also he's gonna feel really good about his jungler. So it's more the mentality of what we did than the actual gold. And yes, maybe I could get more out of it if I got the gold onto myself. That that is not unlikely. But doing so is from like a mental standpoint not worth it um all right so we're gonna go down here i'm just gonna cover a little bit of this uh turret and the reason why we're doing so is just i want to make sure that we don't lose too many armor plating so we go down here and we just kind of hang out and uh get a little bit we kind of soak up some of the xp we ensure that we don't lose an objective this is something also like in general as a jungler you don't want to uh like if you're sitting in in your bot jungle and the enemy team is literally pushing your bot turret while your bot lane is back then you're kind of screwing up like th this is now your fault because you would actually be able to go save a part of this like you should never you should always prioritize objectives over your own cs in jungle like taking 
taking your jungle is something you do in between things to keep your gold up and to get your XP. Like, it doesn't matter when you go gank in lane if you're one or two levels behind because your finest job, as we said, is to apply pressure. And most likely in a 2v1 situation, you will win regardless of whether or not... Um, regardless of whether or not that... Uh, yeah, that you have the same level. So, right here... We're gonna kind of look for whether or not a gank is possible. The thing I'm a little afraid of is I actually do not know whether Shivana is. Seeing as Lucian is Oom, we will go for this engage. Because uh, I believe that this is very, very doable. Alright, there we are getting... I, did, I didn't actually need my ult. Alright, so... Right here, we know that Drake is coming up. I have one minute cooldown on Smite. Um, and Shivana is moving down here. She's right on our left side. So we got to kind of stay aware of that one. And what we need to think about with Graves is that we are kind of amazing in... Oh. We are amazing when we won us. Uh, and Duelist in general, we're really, really good. We have a lot of damage. And that's something that we really want to think about. But Shivana can still be kind of scary. Um, right here, the thing is we don't have Smite. So, seeing as we don't have it, we can't actually do much right here. Uh, so, I'm going to try and buy a little bit of time. Because we'll have to go do something before we can uh, get that Drake. But right now, we got them pushed off. And I want to look for something around the Drake. We can see the Shivana goes in here. Now, she's stuck between me and the bot lane if they come up here. So, this is kind of perfect, actually. This should hopefully be kind of a free kill. All right, she's going to use her cooldown to get off. Oh, wow, I actually failed that really badly. All right, at the end of this, we're actually losing this fight pretty hard. Set is not going to be able to turn this around at all. Like, I got caught too early in that engage and literally took too much damage from uh, the Lucian, Lucian Ulf. That's basically what happened there. Anyhow, hopefully they won't be able to take the drake before i'm back down there and i can apply pressure i did forget to take a control ward we really really needed one here uh but seeing as this guy is now hitting the scuttle it could appear that they're not on drake which is really good for us so we'll rush down here and see if we can uh i won't be able to steal the scuttle it'll die just before that but I'll go down bot side again. I will scan. And we'll make sure that we remove the wards down here. There we go. Alright. Apparently this guy is kind of disrespecting, so... Oof. Okay. I'll keep him pretty low, and that should give some free pressure for a bot lane. Maybe even a free kill. So overall, that, that's just actually very, very worth it. We'll go back up into our jungle. They did get the shot down down there because he was solo. Uh, when clearing the jungle, make sure you get up close to your targets here to deal the most damage on each of them. But yeah, as we kind of move into the mid and late game, um, then the thing you want to focus on on Graves is actually you, you, you actually kind of want to think of it again as kind of playing a Brewster slash ADC, you most of the time always want to just go for their front line or go for whatever's uh, closest to you and that way kind of shred through them because Graves does a lot of damage. But you don't want to get caught in the middle of everything just as we did before. Uh, all right, so right here, I think we'll go back down Drake because at this point, they just killed the bot lane. I should be able to take this and I'm a little bit afraid of... Shivana, but Shivana is top side, so we can just absolutely free take this now. So that's what we'll do. And we know how important Drakes are for Shivana, so getting this is absolutely huge for us. So we'll make sure that we get this, and hopefully by the end of it, we can also go directly down to bot side. We can gank that. So this is a really nice trade. And uh, the coolest thing is that even though we didn't help top, then because we gave these two kills, at the beginning to our Aatrox. He's actually 4-0 now. He's killing that Shivana by himself as well. So things are just slowly snowballing up there, which is really freaking nice. 
Okay, so right here, there's not really much point for us to stay here. I just want people to back out. Um, we do want this turret, but it's not worth standing in a bush kind of waiting for them because they already know we're there. So we might as well move back out. I'm going to go into this lane. Just take the minion that's otherwise going to die and we'll move up and actually just start clearing out our jungle all, until we kind of see a better thing to do. One of the things we want to look for now is now that Drake is down, there's only one other objective besides turrets and that is Rift Herald. And this is something, especially with our Aatrox that is now kind of snowballing hard that we want to look for because this can end the game really early for us if we play our hand right. So... I want to make sure that right now I see Aatrox is backing. So I want to back with him and I want to go uh, Rift as soon as he's back into lane. This lane is going to be dead anyway before that. So there's not much to do down there right now. We'll get our boots and we'll start building an extra pair of... Let's actually just wait another five gold. Um, There we go. Get an extra longsword. So I want to go down here. I want to kind of look for the Rift Herald. I see that Shivana is down on the bot side of uh of the uh the map so so far i should be fine to just free take it i want atrox to just push out a little bit so i'm not afraid that his top laner is going to come and collide with the other one also now i can see shivana is moving here so it's something we got to be a little aware of uh because this means that i cannot take the rift right away but what i can do is i can just go kind of check her jungle we'll see what's here and then i'll move back out um right now i want to kind of look for this rift but i'm a little scared seeing as uh as i don't know where she is i'm gonna call for for atrix to help me because if i don't get this help then we will most likely die so if you're as a jungler sitting in this situation then don't just take rift if you're afraid uh, if you know that our jungler is close, then rather say, okay, I'm going to try and ping for help to take it. And if your teammate does not want to help or cannot help, then don't go for the rift. Because you're just going to risk, first of all, losing the rift. Second of all, also dying while doing so. We're just going to make things really freaking hard for you going forward. So, so far, this is looking really, really nicely. Um, this turret does not have a lot of HP, so I don't want to use the rift right here on that one. We want to try and use it on another thing. So I'm going to clear a part of this guy's jungle. I see that uh, their gray or their Gragas is kind of moving around over there. But things are looking pretty dang fine so far. So we could go for a rift on this in just a moment. Just kind of want to wait for him. And we're going to pop it as close to as possible. So we should be able to at least get this turret before... Uh, they react even if their uh, top laner comes up here it will not be in due time and again get close to the turrets with graves in order to maximize damage but of course only do so if you're safe to otherwise you can do it at a distance but you are going to do less damage anyway we can actually kind of continue this we will get the second jump i, I think we could actually kind of okay this might be a little a little risky but we are going to be able to pull it off there we go all right, so right here, their whole team is probably going to back off and kind of figure out, hey, or or, or top side is losing not only hard, but terribly hard. And this is what I meant, like taking that rift and playing it kind of safe can finish the game for us uh, fairly quickly. And, and one thing as a jungler is it, it's a really freaking good idea to play around the winning lanes. Like, don't try and, and keep trying to save a lane that is losing hard like it is too risky like yes sometimes you might be able to pull it off and i'm not saying don't help them at all if it's safe to do so go ahead and do so but if you have a lane that's going uh both both teammates have been dead twice or three times so the enemy team is really far ahead in that side and you don't know where their jungler is so you cannot take a 3v2 situation on that lane or a 2v1 situation then do not go for it it's not worth the risk like if if you go for a gank on on let's say i gank this spot lane and we don't know where their jungler is and their jungler then came, comes in and helps out then guess what happens like or bot lane is behind meaning that you as a jungler have to make up for the power that the enemy have but if the 
enemy both has an advantage in the bot lane plus they have their jungler there then you are by definition screwed so do not go ahead and do that just play instead play it a bit more safe think about which lanes you can make a difference in and focus on them and then kind of snowball them instead it is so much better for you also one thing that you need to think about that is very important is soaking xp and soaking gold this is basically if you uh oh they are actually going oh, really okay this bot lane this bot lane is not by like they're not geniuses i'll i'll i i yeah I should probably have been down on this Drake, but I did not even realize they were on it. Like, that they weren't full headed on it. So. Oh, I don't think we can do this. Their, their full team is there. We'll back out. There's not much we can do. I want to get grabbed by this guy, but there's a lot. There's a huge pile of gold right here. We'll clean this and then we'll go top side. Again right here there's not much we can do or bot side like or support has been dead nine times or adc seven times and we did try and gank them we did do some stuff down there to try and apply pressure but it simply hasn't been enough instead we've tried to kind of snowball the top lane which has been go going pretty well and our mid laner has also fortunately enough done pretty decently even though we haven't been there a lot um but we're slowly snowballing we're doing pretty fine we are going to be able to finish one of our big items so we're going to take this we'll back off and i think we'll kind of be looking at the map saying okay what can we do from here uh i want to get myself the collector then we want to get a couple of control wards so we can like kind of establish a mission uh i want to put this vision most likely either on an objective as we take it or i want to try and see if i can get it into their jungle so i can get some more information more frequently on where their jungler is so i know what i can do because a lot of things when you do play player versus player games in my opinion the best like phrase you can learn is know your enemy know yourself and that's kind of the, the mindset as a jungler you gotta think about is if you know where the enemy jungler is if you know what he's doing you know what you can do you know if you can go for a gank you know if you can go for uh counter jungling stealing some of his jungle that is by definition also kind of a an objective oh i gotta be careful here so this is not a perfect fight for us they're going really hard in and i did not play that perfectly either at all but i'm trying somewhat to uh, to play it safe and see if we can not mess this up so there's not really any point taking this huge fight that people just did because there's no objective to fight over. The closest thing is trying to take a turret. And by the looks of this fight, a turret was never really in question of whether or not we will get that unless uh, we actually kind of ace them, which would never, ever be the case. Uh, when you're going for super, super fast clear and you're kind of in her just farming and need to, uh, to kind of hurry things up and you're going for a bag fairly soon, then you can use your W on some of the minions in order to uh to just use the aoe damage that it gives uh to clear out the uh the minions which is honestly pretty nice all right so let's get this and we're just starting to build towards a bloodthirster which will be a really really nice item for us once we can get it uh we'll go down here we'll kind of scan i want to know where people are they're blue spawning so we're gonna steal out real quick but we're gonna we kind of drag it out here because i know most likely gracchus will come up to us he was in the butt side and there we go okay we can clear out this vision set is dying in there because apparently he went 1v3 there we go let's get that All right, so all five enemies are most likely moving to us. So we have to back out here because we have no information on anybody at all. So moving away is the best thing we can do. Yeah, we see at least two people now, most likely more on the way. So Drake is up in one minute. So we have a couple of options here. We can just rush straight down to bot lane. This fight, I do not want to take. So I think we'll actually just go ahead. We'll back. Yes, we won't get a lot from this back, but what we want to do is we want to make sure 
that when we get to this 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 Drake fight, that we have as much of the items uh, or ha have used as much of our gold as possible before an objective. And for those of you who wonder why, this is because your gold is actually not worth anything before you spend it. I know when I say it, it sounds super obvi obvious. But this is something I see very often when I spectate other people's games and when I see people play and they're like, what am I doing wrong? Well, pretty often people are just kind of sitting on their gold and they don't back before a big objective. And then that gold is just actually worth nothing. Like... If you have 10 kills and all the goals from those 10 kills, you won't get any advantage in a fight from it if you don't use the goal before the next fight. The only advantage you, you can then kind of get is the uh, the XP advantage. So I'm going to do the safe thing. I'm taking the Drake and this before I'm moving down here. I didn't see any purpose in going for this full born chase fight. Uh, I just rather take the safe objective and get kind of the gold so we should be able to uh probably get something out of this Oof, i actually missed that shot I, i'll just go up here and we can clear, clear this guy as he jumps back like this is one of the fun things when playing against yone like literally you can just go to your shadow wait for him and be like it's like waiting at a train station you know the train is gonna come and when it does you're gonna get right on it and that's what we did we got on the kill train <laughs> Uh, but we're just slowly, we're focusing on the objectives. We're not so focused on getting all the kills. As a jungler, that is not what you need to do. You need to focus on the objectives and capturing uh, or putting pressure on the map and thereby making it easier for your team uh, to win the matches. So there again, we back up around our team's play. That was a decent play. Aatrox is doing really well after we gave him that advantage early game. And we can just kind of scale this. And as I said, like all of these things kind of collided to hopefully they will be able to finish this game pretty soon. Backing out here is a good idea. If we kept going for this push, yes, if we if we ace them, we could probably finish. But it's also kind of a risk. There is a good chance that we would not be able to uh, to pull it off. And instead they would ace us and they would actually just kind of get another chance to get back into the game. So we'll just clean out a bit of their jungle. It is an objective because we're removing something from the map that the enemy team really, really wants. And uh, yeah, this is just really nice. And make sure that as you get into the mid and late game, that you you keep your focus on getting your gold. Like we can see right now, we have some pretty decent farm. We're 180 CS. This is not absolutely insane, but it's good enough that we're actually ahead of most of the others. Uh, and we're, we're, we're really, really strong at this point. And we just keep scaling. So right here, I know I'm pretty close to finishing my Bloodthirster. Uh, so that's the next thing I want to do. As I run past, then I want to make sure that I get down some uh, some vision onto, uh, onto the Baron. Just in case they go for a full-born uh, Baron play or risky Baron play. So my team is now apparently trying to go for some kind of risky play that i don't really see the sense in right now but we might have to go back off actually i'll clean this the thing is i really want to get it back now because i have oh we can actually go uh, we can go baron here i really want it back because i have a lot of gold sitting on me and i can get my i can finish my blood thirst which is going to be a huge thing for for us wow i actually don't know why i threw that one but we'll just kind of start off this baron as much as we can our team is now coming to help out and we know for a fact they don't have vision i'll put down here just so we're 100 sure that they they don't see it but if if they would have they they would have seen it long ago um and i would have seen some enemy come down here so this is just kind of a free baron right here there we go now we can go back we can get our bloodthirster and hopefully we should be able to uh to finish this fight up off uh fairly quick but we will get ourselves the first part of our death dance and yeah kind of just move back into lane hopefully our team will also back capitalize on the gold they've now received by the last couple of items that should establish us to a point where we can actually finish the match 
Um, and this is by no means a absolutely perfect play by me on this guy. But I, it kind of comes to show the train of thought that you need to have. You can play Graves also as kind of an assassin. Uh, if you build an assassin build, the tactics are very, very, very similar. Oof, that is not going to be enough. But he's going to have to back out and he did have to use his flash. So overall, pretty fine. 30 seconds on Drake. So we have two options here. One of them is keep applying pressure to this lane and just have Drake to back off on. We could go directly Drake or we could split Drake, meaning that some of us pressure the uh, the mid side and then just put one guy down to take the Drake. And most likely they won't be able to contest it at all because they're pressured on more than one lane. Taking Drake right now, in my opinion, does, is, is not really necessary. Um, we have the pressure to push in here because the bottom hit is already down. So pushing for objectives here in the inner base seems like a better choice, in my opinion. So that's what we're going to go for. we got to be a little careful, though, because they are still fairly strong. Whoop. All right, so teammates took a lot of, lot of damage there. So keeping this push on is not necessarily the best thing. I'll go down. I'll take the drag. If my team doesn't stay, they don't. Good. All right, let's take the drag. And then we can kind of make our team reset. Set is super low. So we'll just go back here. We'll take the drag. And that will hopefully force a fight on their part. We can go back up here. All right, so their bot inhib is going back up now. Whoops. Don't want to risk anything. But yeah, when you do play Graves here in the mid to late game, when you are in full bond te team fights, then you kind of want to think of Graves as a Brewster slash uh, melee-ish champion. You don't want to dive down onto the bot or onto their back line and try to kill them. You want to go for whatever front line there is because you actually deal a lot of damage and you're going to shred through them fairly easy. So you just want to be going for whatever is closest to you. Uh, you don't want to end up in the middle of five enemies that suddenly collapse on you. However, if you are playing the assassin version of Graves, then things are a little bit different because this is where uh if you're playing an assassin build you you want to go for more of a a looking for flanks on the enemy's backline and then kind of try and assassinate whatever squishies they have then you of course do not want to go for the front line but as bruce or graves it's fairly simple how you want to play him in the uh in the uh, mid to late game you want to play around objectives you are the jungler you always need to be on point with drags barons etc all these things you want to make sure that you are on the right objectives so right here we will just push this and hit because they're super occupied in the other side and we can just go in take this and hit without them contesting it and slowly move out uh, I, I need to be a little careful here because I know that uh, they're looking for me as I'm trying to transist. Oh, I see my team engaging before I'm back down there. I think they might be able to do this. I think it might be okay. The enemy is at least trying to back out. They're slowly trying to. We will be able to get a kill down there on one of them from our team. That's really, really nice. I am tanking the turret here, but I honestly do not mind too much. We can just dash out. And they have four dead enemies, meaning that this will be a nice little victory. There we go. GG's. So that was actually a victory. Really, really nice. I really like this old game overall. Uh, like, I this does not show you how to perfectly play uh, jungler, play graves in the jungle but it gives you kind of the mindset you need to have uh as a jungler and just generally how you want to do things um i think this this really shows it well that 
it doesn't really matter if you get 10 kills or 15 kills as a jungler your prime objective is to apply pressure to lanes it is to help your lanes win not necessarily by go killing the, the enemy champion but by applying pressure and putting them in kind of a sticky situation like even the gang one of the gangs we did in bot lane where yes we did not kill their adc but we got her to like 25 uh 15 25 percent hp then she was suddenly in a situation where she was low hp and she her the lane was pushing towards her so she had two options back lose a couple of uh, armor platings to our bot lane stay and risk dying but maybe being able to slowly um get that gold and it puts people in a really bad position and even if you don't get any damage on them the fact that you show up and they have to back out and they're like oh wait the jungler is here and if you keep kind of doing that you kind of mentally screw up your enemies and that can really make your teammates win and in terms of giving whenever you do get kills then really consider giving it to your teammates in order to to build up their confidence not only in you but also in themselves uh this can really help out because they'll be like okay this jungle is really nice he's actually helping me out he's just not he, he's he's not just kill stealing and even if you then take a kill once in a while he knows that you're there for him and if you go for a call and baron a drake or something else if you've been kind to this guy and giving him gold and other stuff and helped him out by by giving him the kills then i promise you nine out of ten times people will respond instantly to your calls like if you've helped them out if like this atrax the second i called can you help me on rift that guy moved down there that would not have happened most likely if I did not already gank his lane twice, helped him out. So he knew that when I'm calling, I need help for Rift. Even if he doesn't see any particular reason why, then he listens because he, he has confidence in what I'm doing. So it's very important for you to try and build confidence around your team and evaluate which, which kind of lanes are do doing well and how much can you save on the, the, the lanes that are not doing well? Like, on a hard losing lane, don't ever go for a gank if you don't know 100% sure that it is going to be a situation where you outnumber your enemies. All right. So I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this one and it taught you a thing or two, not only about how to play Graves in terms of macro play, but also just, just kind of in general, the mindset of playing a jungler. Uh, jungle is not my main role, so I know that there might be some people out there that can do this a lot better than me. Uh, maybe you can explain it better, but I hope this at least taught you a thing or two. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe down below. Join in on our amazing community. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button. And if you want to see me live, go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. I stream in there every single Friday. But yeah, that's going to be it for this one. As always, stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.